gunung ini kalori needs the second step is calculating the need for calories protein fat and carbohydrate per meal this is calculated by the percentage of 20% for breakfast 10% for morning snack 30% for lunch 10% for afternoon snack and 30% for tea. The next step is determining food ingredients using the PSO method. Like other PSO method calculation in this study, the calculation steps are also the same. The parameters used in this work are article, is 30, iteration 15, dimension of 20 for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and 12 for morning and afternoon snack. And the beginning, the beginning next C1 and C2 are determined following existing reference. The last step is adjusting the weight of food ingredients. From food ingredients that have been recommended, sometimes the calorie and gram content in the stuff doesn't match the patient needs. For this reason, the weight of, food of the food is adjusted to the food ingredients. The patient will be given two options for food ingredients recommendation. First option will reduce the weight of food ingredients that has the greatest amount. Second option will reduce all weight of food ingredients and the result is that all of the recommended food ingredients have the same weight. 130 patient data were placed. 120 patient data were placed with different variation based on age sex, weight, height, activity, and different hemodynamic status condition, while the other test data will be evaluated by a clinical nutrition specialist. From 130 patient database, the average recommendation of food ingredients is almost the same, but with different food weight depending on the patient's daily needs. It happens because the loss to fitness value in the result of the PSO method shows the similar recommendation result. The evaluation of the test result was carried out by a clinical nutrition specialist. This feature showed the result of evaluation by the expert. From test data that have been evaluated, the average score is 3.5. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Based on the result of this evaluation, there are four a few limitations. The first is it doesn't include a reference to the glycemic index of food in the system group. In E1 and E4, the ones with the lowest evaluation value have notes and on banana. The journal published by Hoerichin said that banana have a moderate glycemic index. However, because it has a high carbohydrate, carbohydrate content, same source say that eating banana for very petite patient solving not be too much. And second, it has a lot of respondents on the analysis of the result analysis. The lack of respondent to the analysis of the result analysis makes the rules, it makes the result of the evaluation has mixed up. Let's mix it. This feature show the graph of the movement of the velocity in the E1 test data for the time. Based on the graph, it shows that the entire graph of average relative velocity decrease. Most value of V are zero in the 12 iteration. Based on the 120 data that have been tested, the result of the ingredients recommendation are shown in this feature. The first one is the apple food. It show from this feature, it shows that macaroni is recommended more often than other apple food. Second is vegetable that show that, that kuih is recommended more often than other vegetable. And the third is the third is this. It shows that chicken is recommended more often than other sandwiches. And the last is fruit. It shows that salad is recommended more often than other fruits. From this feature, it shows that patients with low nutritional requirement has 
have the same recommendation for preferably. It is caused by that the PHP method looks for recommendation by taking the combination of food ingredients that have the small nutritional value of them of here in the recommendation result because they have the smells fitness value. And the last conclusion, conclusion recommendation for food menus will make based on gender, age, weight, pay, activity, and health status or hemodialysis status. ESO it helps to find a variety of food menus with a small fitness value. After conducting ten tests with different input, input and evaluating the result by a clinical nutrition specialist, the average score was 3.5 out of 5 points. Several so suggestions to improve this research. First, adding food data with the low and medium glycemic index. Second, provide Food data reference. Third, adding respondents to analyze the results for respondents from patient and nutrition. Thank you for the time. Uh, any question? Yeah, thank you, Ibu Verina uh, Salama from uh, Universitas 11 Maret, Indonesia, for the presentation. Um, uh, we, so we still have time. We invite one or two questions for Ibu Verina, please. It's a surprise to see that Salak has the lowest protein, yeah? And it's yes. good for the, for the, the diet. Yes. <laughs> okay. Any question, Bapak Ibu? If there's no questions, so I think um, thank you for the presentation, Ibu Verina. Uh, I will yeah. take a picture of you. Can you move a little bit backward? Ah, okay, good. Give us your best smile. Three, two. Thank you, Viverina. Yeah. Okay. Now let's um, move on to the next uh, presentation by Ibu Cynthia Faira. Ibu Cynthia, are you? Here already? Yes. Yeah, Ibu Cynthia Faira Hudianti. Yes, sure. Okay. From Institute Technology School, November, Indonesia. We have present a paper entitled Modeling MIMO Transfer Function for Analysis of the Relationship Between Temperature and Air Humidity with the Number of Confirmation, Suspect, and Probable COVID 19 in Surabaya. Ibu Verina, the floor is yours. Oh, sorry. Ibu Cynthia, <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, yeah. now, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. And now I will present my, our uh, paper in the tab title, Modeling Memo Transfer Function for Analysis of the Relationship Between Temperature and Air Humidity with the Number of Confirmation Suspect and Probable COVID-19 in Surabaya. Uh, author is me, Cynthia Ferraudianti, and Joko Yanto Bugliali, and Mr. Ahmad Seiko from the Department of Informatics, Institute Technology, School of Member, Surabaya. Uh, okay, wait, wait a minute, Ibu Cynthia. Do you have uh, another device around you? Maybe it's too close because it's echoing. Oh, sorry, sorry. 
Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. Outlier, for this introduction, second case study, research method, experimental result, and the last is conclusion. Introduction in Indonesia, the first case of COVID-19 was found on March 2, 2020. Uh, COVID-19 is the most significant cause of disruption to the economic, education, and political sector that occurred not only in Indonesia. Indonesia in initially used the term confirmation, PDP, or pasien dalam pengawasan for patient under surveillance and ODP, or orang dalam pantauan for people under monitoring until August 2020. Based on the decree of the Minister of Health number XK0107-4134 2020 concerning uh, guidelines for prevention and control of COVID-19, Indonesia changed the classification of patient divided into three confirmation, suspect, and probable. Okay. The spread of COVID-19 has many causative factors which are not only caused by surface factors and the order lines of the response to COVID-19, but can also be influenced by several factors, including climatic conditions such as temperature and humidity in a specific area. Several previous studies have also examined the, uh, the influence of climatic conditions of the transmission of COVID-19 in an area is from Iqbal M that which examine the relationship between regional climate parameters over a global scale and also through the rapid spread of COVID-19. And Mendes Ariaga F also conducted research whose results also saw the effect of uh, temperature evaporation, rainfall, and the general climate on local transmission of the COVID-19 in 31 states uh, of the Mexican uh, capital. This study was conducted to see the relationship between regional climate variable and the daily number of COVID-19 patients in Surabaya. The result is the transfer function and also the performance of the transfer function for testing results compared to using the ARIMA method. Okay, case study. The amount of uh, the amount of data used is 227 data. The data consists of daily observation from August 22, 2020 until 5 April 2021. The number of daily confirmed suspect and probable COVID-19 case in Surabaya is provided by Gugus Tugas Percepatan Penanganan COVID-19 Kota Surabaya and is available online. The claims data used in this research are daily weather observation obtained from uh, the meteorology Climatology and Geophysics Agency BMKG and available online too from uh, Perak Maritime Meteorology Station 2, BMKG Meteorological Station Park 1, and BMKG Meteorological Station Juanda Sidoarjo. Arima. Uh, this is a uh, equation of Arima with PDK is uh, order for autoregressive, uh, he is order for moving efforts, then D are uh, order for differencing. The ARIMA model or autoregressive moving efforts is one of the most widely used statistical methods in forecasting or prediction research. ARIMA combined two models, namely autoregressive and moving efforts. Uh, multi input, multi output, multi output, MIMO transfer function. Uh, the transfer function is a multivariate time series model. So the transfer function is different from the ARIMA model because the ARIMA model is univariate. 
In addition to relating the value of the previous series, the tensor function model also relates the value of the series to several other time series values. MIMO tensor function can also be called a matrix tensor function. The matrix tensor function is a generation of the tensor function of single input, single output system uh, and can see the model is like matrix in PPT. Okay, in the model with one output, tensor function only one equation is required to describe the model, like in the PPT. Mimo tensor function. Uh, pre account the deep uh, the depend variable to clean the pattern of the depend variable series so that only the white noise input series remains. Uh, second, pre whitening for independent series, maintaining its series functional relationship in the tensor function and entering the value in XP into CT. We take relation using the cross correlation function of res residual noise for B, uh, delay time. S is number of numerator and R is number dominant. Dominator. Performance. The main sort percentage error score is categorized as very good for uh, MAPI value. If the value is below 10, categorized uh, as good. If the value is between 10 to 20, categorized as moderate. If the value is between 20 to 50, and above 50 is categorized as bad. Arima, uh, this is a uh, expect Riemann results. For confirmation, the best model is Arima 313. Suspect Arima is 2610. Probable is Arima 421. Temperature is Arima 011. And humidity is Arima Two one one, and the model of Arima is uh, slow in four point. Uh, the performance of Arima for the market timing is good. Uh, Three point seven two two for confirmation for uh, for MAPE suspect for for MAPE uh, probable and two for MAPE temperature and humidity. For the MAPE testing, uh, it's look is not good uh, except temperature and humidity. It's categorized in very good MIMO tensor function. Before modeling the single input, single output, or multi input, single output tensor function, for make multi input, multi output tensor function. So, uh, we look the cross correlation function can be seen that confirmation case is significant with the suspect. Suspect case is significant for confirmation and temperature, but probable doesn't correlate with for independent variable. Nemo transfer function, the parameter estimates we obtain for the uh, tensor function, then the tensor function model for the confirmation output and suspect input is uh, VBXT uh, 0 0.246 minus 0 0.267 B XT min 5 because uh, delay time is 5. And this is for tensor function model suspect output and confirmation input and suspect output and temperature input. For the performance, single input, single output, it is more uh, good uh, with ARIMA model. MAPE testing confirmation is 19, suspect is 26 and 47. MIMO tensor function, this is a performance multi-input single output. 
the MAPFE testing for confirmation is 19 and suspect is 32. And in the right, we can uh, see the result of uh, transfer function multi input multi output or matrix transfer function. Conclusion The research results showed that the climatic condition that affect the COVID 19 case is the temperature factor. Air temperature correlates with the number of daily suspects for COVID 19 Surabaya with a delay time value of 2. In comparison, the climate factor of air humidity doesn't affect uh, the number of confirmation, suspect, or probable. Another variable influencing each other is the number of confirmation and suspect with a time delay value of 5. For testing data, the MAPI value for confirmation was 44.83. Categories as moderate and then increase to 19.204 categories as group. The MAPE value of suspects in the ARIMA model is 54 categories as bad and then improve to 32, which is categories as moderate. Uh, even forecasting, the number of suspects can have a MAPE value of 26 for one input, uh, namely with uh, confirmation. The result of the task of function has a good performance in training but less in testing. The best performance is in forecasting nearly confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Surabaya. The results of the task of function have good performance in training but deficient in testing. So, Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ibu Cynthia Faira Hudianti from Institute Technology 10 November Indonesia for the presentation. And um, if there's any participant who still feel curious about the research of Ibu Cynthia Faira and friends, um, you may contact her directly. Um, because the um, time slot is already over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you Ms. But thank wait, you. let me take a picture of you in a. Okay. Ready? Three, two, one. Thank you, Ibu uh, uh, Cynthia. Okay, uh, now let's uh, move on to the next presentation by Mr. Matthias Nichting from German Aerospace Center, DLR, Germany. I uh, will deliver a presentation entitled Case Study on Gap Selection for Automated Vehicles Based on Deep Key Learning. Mr. Nichting? Yes, hello. Yeah, hello. Thank you for the introduction. Um, will you show the video or should I uh, share my screen and uh, present it? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, you yourself uh, share your screen and present it. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Me too, I'm still here. <laughs> Okay, I think now you can see my screen, right? Clear. Okay, yes, so um, yeah, welcome to the talk about our contribution to the conference. I'm Matthias Nichting of the Institute of Transportation Systems at the German Aerospace Center. And uh, today I present our case study on gap selection for automated vehicles based on deep Q learning. So, First, uh, I would like to give a brief overview of the project background that led to the research I'm about to present. Um, the case study uh, it took place within subproject coincide of the priority program Cohen Car, 
of the German Research Foundation. And um, this priority program covers almost all facets of cooperative driving, like um, cooperative perception uh, and cooperative maneuver and trajectory planning. So um, the motivation uh, of our work is to find an effective solution uh, for the gap selection problem in situations that necessitate lane changings. Lane changings, for example, because of an ending lane as illustrated in the figure on this slide. On the first glance, um, one can think that the selection of a gap for changing lanes may be trivial, but uh, it's a decision that's done by human drivers based on their perception um, and assessment of a situation and also on their experience and even their intuition. And there are no obvious rules that are followed to make um, this decision. And when designing a function for automated gap selection, complexity results from the great number of influencing factors and many different criteria for an optimal solution. Um, even if the objective is clear and precisely defined, the derivation of rules to achieve the um, objective is very cumbersome. And um, so machine learning may be a suitable method to find an effective solution and to accelerate the process of designing a decision-making module uh, for, this, uh, for this problem. Okay, and uh, on the next four slides, I will explain the methodology of our approach. We use uh, deep queue learning to find a strategy that achieves the objective of maximizing the reward. And um, the reward function itself, I will define it on a later slide. Um, but the learning agent uh, has as input a state vector that represents the environment. And as output, the agent decides for an action of the action space. And in order to decide for an action to achieve the objective, Q values for state action pairs are learned. And these Q values are iteratively updated during the training based on the reward that is provided to the agent at the end of each training episode. And the Q value of a state action pair represents the estimated future reward of taking um, action A in a certain action uh, in a certain state S. And yeah, so without uh, going into detail, I would like to um, show you the Bayman equation here that represents the method of iteratively updating the Q values based on the reward signal. So the updated Q value for a state action pair results uh, from the old Q value plus the difference between the estimated value before and after taking action A. Uh, excuse me. Um, and uh, so there are uh, two variables left here. Um, first one is alpha, which is the learning rate. Uh, it is used to influence uh, stability and speed of the training process. And uh, gamma is to discount future rewards compared to um, uh, rewards that are given to the agent uh, earlier. Okay, so having the fundamental idea of Q learning defined, um, state space, action space, and reward function need to be designed. Um, the state space uh, of the example on hand is continuous, and the state vector consists of 14 elements. All the values of the state vector elements are normalized and bounded. And the 14 state vector elements are chosen in a way to represent all relevant information for the decision of gap selection and to avoid any unnecessary information. The first two elements represent the position and the velocity of the ego vehicle, which is depicted in orange color on the figure on the slide here. And for each of the two vehicles in front of the ego vehicle on the target lane and the two vehicles behind the ego vehicle on the target lane, uh, three pieces of information are incorporated into the state vector. And these are the position of the rear bumper, the position uh, of the front bumper and the velocity. And yes, so these sum up to 12 element, uh, 14 elements in the state vector. 
yeah, the action uh, space is discrete. There are four different actions the agent can choose performing lane following with a maximum speed allowed is uh, action A0. Merging into gap uh, G1, G2, or G3 is uh, done by choosing action A1, A2, or A3, respectively. Yeah, so we use a sparse reward function that returns a reward unequal zero only at the end of an episode. In case the episode ends with a successful lane change, a reward of 50 is returned. In case the lane changing somehow failed, uh, minus 15 is returned as reward. And in um, classic queue learning for each state that may occur in the environment, multiple queue values are stored. So for a certain problem, the number of queue values that need to be stored and updated is the number of possible different states times the number of actions in the action space. And in case of very large state interaction spaces, this approach um, becomes impractical, impractical. Um, especially in case of a continuous state space, as in our example, um, a Q function approximator is a good alternative. And uh, we use as a Q function approximator an artificial neural network with 14 input nodes for output nodes and the one hidden layer has 70 artificial uh, neurons. Yes, so now uh, coming to the experiment, um, we uh, conducted the experiment to test the method and the figure on this slide shows um, the map that is used to test the gap selection function. Um, the ego vehicle, uh, it's depicted in orange, starts on the outer right lane and needs to merge onto the middle lane. And at the beginning of each episode, it starts in front of the lane merge situation. And when reaching the area where the lane change should be performed, it has already reached the maximum speed of uh, 50 kilometers per hour. Uh, the traffic on the middle lane and the outer left lane is simulated with four different types of motor vehicles. And each type has a specific length and a specific uh, velocity distribution um, uh, that's given here in the table. Um, yes, the probability in the table represents the probability of a vehicle of this type is spawned within a certain second. And it's given for each lane individually. Um, Yes, and with this definition of the surrounding traffic, it's um, non-deterministic and each vehicle is individual um, in a training episode. And um, yeah, one last comment on that is um, that the traffic is non, uh, not interacting with the learning agent. So it's completely um, uncooperative and uninteracting. Yeah, so some remarks on the implementation. We use many open source frameworks. Um, so the whole vehicle automation part, for example, the trajectory planning and the controlling, um, we use the door framework and the surrounding traffic is modeled with Zumo. For the machine learning part, we used TF agents and TensorFlow. Yeah, so the training, um, part, uh, the decision is made with one hertz frequency and the optimization um, is done by the Adam algorithm. We use the technique of experience replay um, to reduce correlation of um, the observation sequences and uh, to fill the experience replay, we used an epsilon greedy policy with epsilon uh, equals uh, zero dot one. Um, yeah, with this slide, I would like to give you a brief overview over the results of the experiments. Um, on the left hand side, the diagram uh, shows the rolling average of the accumulated reward achieved in uh, evaluation episodes between the training episodes. And as you can see, the average reward very quickly increases and ranges approximately between 35, 40 and 50 after 300 training episodes. Um, yeah, we did a quick comparison. Uh, so we uh, chose the training result after about 3,700 training episodes and compared it in 100 evaluation episodes against the simple heuristic. Um, the simple heuristic consists of 
one simple rule only, which is to choose always gap G2. That's the gap that is at the same longitudinal position as the ego vehicle itself. And uh, the comparison shows that the trained DQN agent performs a little bit better uh, with an average reward of 45.5 during uh, these 100 evaluation episodes, while the heuristic um, receives uh, 40.3 as in average. Uh, yeah, finally, I would like to give a short discussion and conclusion. So the method shows an effective resolution of the gap selection problem. Uh, problem. The chosen approach based on reinforcement learning has advantages, but also disadvantages compared to rule-based method. And this uh, trade-off should be made in full awareness of uh, those. And um, in the original contribution, there are uh, more details on that uh, point. Yeah, the complexity of the use case um, elaborated in this research is comparatively low um, in future. Um, we will build upon the results and extend the individual decision making to a cooperative decision making. Um, and that also includes communication between the vehicles on the target lane and the learning agents um, to further improve the uh, lane changing process. Yeah, so uh, this is uh, the end of the presentation. Um, lastly, I would like to refer to our written conference contribution um, that provides many more details and more elaborated explanation on all parts of the um, presented research. And I would like to point out to our Eclipse open source framework, ADOR, for researching a cooperative automated driving. It has been used in this study and is uh, also constantly being further developed. Yeah, so thank you very much for your attention and I'm now happy to answer your questions. Yeah, thank you for the thorough presentation, uh, Mr. Nifting. We invite one question from the participant, please. Ibu Marni, Ibu Yuli. No question from the participant? Okay, then uh, let me take a picture of you. Yeah. Yes. Three, two, one, go. Thank you, Mr. Nathan, for the presentation. Maybe the yeah, presentation you is very clear, so they don't need to ask any questions. <laughs> thank you. Yes, very thank much. you. Yeah, thank you very much. Now let's uh, move on to the next uh, presentation. Let's see. By Bapak Rahmat Imam from Budi Luhur University, Indonesia. Um, he will deliver a paper entitled. Uh, Chris, uh, CRISPR, uh, CR CAS9 to overcome premature convergence in genetic algorithms to support auto recommend content in crowdsourcing media monitoring system. Bapak Rahmat, are you uh, around already? Yes. Okay. Yes, please. Why can I find you? Let me find you. Oh, okay. Bapak Rahmat, let me pin you. There you go. Arama, the floor is yours. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you for the time. I will present our paper in detail CRISPR or Cas9 to overcome premature convergence in genetic algorithm to support auto recommend content in crowdsourcing media monitoring system. Uh, I will, will tell you the introduction, methods, result, and discussion, and conclusion. For the introduction, uh, quality system will make user feel at home. Episode 10 said that one factor that determines 
the quality of the system is the presence of quality information quality information so, so as information that us is always up to date and relevant realizing the relevance of the information for user is a challenge in a developing crowdsourcing system that are very depend on user contrib contribution the system need to provide content recommendation according to user preference and personalize the content the system can use genetic algorithm to provide content recommendation such as the use of genetic algorithm for coronary tourism content recommendation system so quite good result for example we Dodo et al said that the use of genetic algorithm in the system successfully solve the progression in less than 10 seconds in addition in other study by Rismala et al the ability of the genetic algorithm is also quite powerful for optimization problem solution on average even even the processing time can reach six six point zero four second uh, There are weakness in genetic algorithm. Lim et al. said that the possibility of premature convergence could cause the suboptimal solution. Seng et al. said that premature convergence occurs when the population in the genetic algorithm reaches a suboptimal state. As a result, the genetic operator can no longer produce produce offspring with better performance than the parent or same as with the parent. Uh, Sequelero et al. said that the existing methods to overcome premature convergence are spread in three types, namely line A, genetic based, phenotype, and phenotype based. All three based solutions have the same problem. The lack of speciation variation that that cause premature convergence. Species diversity in population can help avoid premature convergence. This research will try to explore a genotype based approach that focus on the on the gene repair. There is research related to CRISPR or Cas9. Genex et al. said that CRISPR had been used to mo modify the genetic of living things. For this research. For this reason, the method adopted from the bacterial mechanism against the virus will be tired to overcome the problem of premature convergence in genetic algorithm. The working of the method offered by adopting CRISPR by finding, cutting, and re replace target genes are indicated to cause premature convergence. Uh, because it's worked at the point where the cause of premature convergence occurs, the hypothesis is that the purpose method is thought to be able to overcome premature convergence. Genetic algorithm iteration, a low level of population diversity of solution tends to result in premature convergence. However, Sequilero said that increasing the diversity can avoid premature convergence because the level of population diversity tends to influence the existence of premature convergence in the genetic algorithm. This study offers a calculation of diversity as a met method for detecting premature convergence. Areca et al. said that Senate diversity index which calculates the diversity of population can be used as yearly detection of premature convergence in genetic algorithm. Uh, if diversity index is zero, it does not have diversity at all. When the diversity index less than one, the diversity level is low. It is moderate when the diversity index between one and three. If more than three, it's in high diversity. Uh, this, this picture about genetic algorithm in conventional method and genetic algorithm with CRISPR. 
CRISPR or Cas9 will will only be be activated when the digital CP index is zero. The conceptual framework as in the picture which show the concept of modified genetic algorithm with CRISPR. The first step is initialis initialization of population. It is the do, doing by record the user score at the system and calculate their fitness value. After that, generate random populate and calculate the fitness cal calculation. If it meet the stopping criteria, in this case, the stopping criteria is is the is population fitness value same or higher than user fitness value. If it happen, they can stop the iteration. Ah, if, if not greater, the next step is selection using roulette wheel method. Uh, method drawing an election with n numerous value opportunity tends to be elected. Next number of the individual in the population. Then the multi and then crossover mutation and mutation mutation process. After that, count count the diversity index. If the diversity index is zero, it's mean it's mean a premature convergence. And if not, this uh, is can can back to genetic conventional genetic algorithm. Ah. This is a conventional genetic algorithm research. This will carry out 10 times the calculation. The result is that conventional genetic algorithm experience two times premature convergence out of total 10 calculations. When premature convergence occurs on calculation 9 and 10, the time span is more than 30 seconds, so the system doesn't, does not run. As a result, Memory cannot be calculated. Premature convergence in in calculation nine and ten occur when the population diversity is zero because of the premature convergence. The achievement fitness value is less than target fitness value. Twenty four of thirty six on calculation nine. And 32 of 36 on calculation 10. In genetic algorithm with CRISPR, uh, when when CRISPR is activated in calculate calculation six, number of iteration become become the largest number among among other calculation, reaching 336 iteration. Therefore, processing time and memory are also greater. The processing time need the processing time is need the time needed need is zero zero point one second, and the memory use is four hundred kilobit. With the use use of CRISPR, no target fitness value is not achieved. All fitness achievement are equal to or more than target fitness value. This is the success rate. <coughs> the genetic algorithm with CRISPR can overcome premature convergence to have no premature convergence. Meanwhile, the conventional genetic algorithm experience premature convergence twice in calculation 9 and 10. <coughs> Looking at this graph explained that the success rate of the CRISPR overcoming premature convergence is 100%. In addition, the rate of premature convergence in the genetic algorithm in the study reached 20%. The genetic algorithm with CRISPR for a fractal processing time have more have more longer than than conventional genetic algorithm. Memory consumption 
consumption for the genetic algorithm with CRISPR is greater than conventional genetic algorithm. A break memory usage for genetic algorithm with CRISPR is above 400 kilobytes. Meanwhile, a break conventional genetic algorithm memory consumption is below 400. If premature convergence Of course, if calculation 9 and 10, memory is not measured because the system is not running correctly. Uh, times in the premature convergence occur in calculation, calculation 9 and 10. <coughs> in the game. At the time, there was a low level uh, diversity index. In calculation 1, Conventional genetic algorithm do not experience premature convergence, although zero diversity index because the minimum fitness requirement already reached. Premature convergence in the conventional genetic algorithm <coughs> occurs in calculation 9 and 10. The fitness value does not exceed or equal the target fitness value. In the calculation line, only up to 24 out of 36, and in the calculation 10, only up to 32 out of 36. From the calculation 1 to 10, if the fitness value is close to the maximum fitness value of 14, the possibility of premature convergence is greater. In the conclusion, the algorithm with CRISPR Cas9 are proven to overcome premature convergence. However, unfortunately, the processing time and memory consumption increase as the number of iterations well. Repeatedly, palindrome value arrangement makes the diversity is not significant. It is because the palindromic arrangement of two value contain the same contain the same value. Therefore, it's need to activate CRISPR Cas9 per time in to increase population diversity to meet the minimum fitness value threshold so that more time and memory are needed. Would the research can be undertaken to increase the diversity in the population by improving the CRISPR or Cas9 method to increase population diversity so that it iteration does not get too many iterations, less memory consumption and short processing time. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pak Ahmad, for the presentation uh, of your paper related to overcome premature convergence. Uh, we invite one question for Pak Ahmad. Okay, uh, Bu Vijay, may yeah, I ask uh, some question to Mr. Ahmad? Sure, Bu Marni, please. Okay, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Ahmad. Rahmat, are you still around? <laughs> yeah. Mr. Rahmat, are you? Ya, yeah, silakan Bu Marni. Oke, okay, uh, hello Mr. Rahmat, I would like to ask you one question about uh, what do you um, why why you choose uh, why you choose a genetic algorithm to support your uh, system ya yeah, recommendation system to handle your uh, project why you choose another another uh, algorithm why you choose uh, genetic algorithm to uh, develop your uh, your system recommended content in crowd crowdsourcing media monitoring okay thank you ibu marni Use genetic algorithm because it's used by many, many, <coughs> many case and it's so it's so uh, quite good result. So I use genetic algorithm. How about the accuracy? Accuracy, uh, you get uh, how many uh, uh, higher the accuracy you get uh, in this uh, in this uh, research? In What my case, rate? in my case, uh, 
in conventional genetic algorithm, I read 18 percent, 18 percent, and and after I add I add CRISPR, it it's become 100 percent. Okay. Okay. Does that answer the question, Bu Yemumatni? Yes, uh, it's uh, clear, Bu. Uh, clear, uh, ma, uh, Bu Fiji. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the question and thank you, uh, Parahmat, for the presentation. Can you please uh, stop the screen share? I'd like to take a picture of you. Okay. Okay, are you ready? Okay, three, two, one. Smile. Go. <laughs> thank you for the picture and thank you for the presentation. Sorry for my bad English. Ah, that's fine. That's good. That's great. Thank you, Parahmat. Now let's move on to the next presentation by Ibu Christina Andriani from Amicom University, Yogyakarta. He will deliver a presentation uh, entitled Prediction of Investment Realization Value Using Support Vector Regression SVR Methods. Ibu Christina, the floor is yours. Okay, good afternoon. I will present my paper with entitled Prediction of Investment Realization Value Using Super Vector Regression or SPR Methods. I will tell about background of the research. Economic growth is an indicator of a country's progress and economic development. Harry Domer stated that investment is needed to achieve, achieve economic growth that grows in the long term. Uh, investment is divided into two domestic investment and foreign investment and both contribute to economic growth. And the investment will profit many benefits including employment, increased tax revenues, increased living standards, of poverty reduction, etc. Investment growth from year to year also fluctuates as can be seen in a period of 10 years. There has been an increase and decrease uh, in investment value. Seeing that investment is very important in supporting economic growth, it is necessary to predict the realization of the investment that can be used for decision making and policies on plan and realization of investment. This study focuses on the realization of domestic investment, where domestic investors carry out the investment with micro, small, medium, and large-scale businesses. Prediction of the realization of this investment will use the SVR method, which has the advantage of overcoming nonlinear data and data series. In addition, there may be overfitting that it can overcome by using the kernel. The study will compare the performance of the RPF kernel and the polynomial kernel to predict investment realization. And then the question will arise regarding how the prediction ratio of investment realization using the SVR method and the RPF kernel and the polynomial kernel will arise. SVR is development of SVM whose output is 
in the form of natural or continuous numbers. The purpose of SVR is to find a function as a hyperline or separation line in the form of a regression function that corresponds to all input with a minor possible error. However, in this method, there is often overfitting. It will be overcome by using the kernel because by using kernel data, inputs, by using kernel, input space will be mapped to feature space with higher dimensions. Uh, at the research, we will use the kernel RBF and kernel polynomial because kernel RPF uh, very widely used in the case of vector mapping for non-linear non cases. And RPF kernel also used when the data are not linearly separated. The methodology or uh, the states in this research include Realization data used in the study is monthly data from uh, 2020 until 2020, whereas data from where whereas data uh, from one stop integrated service and investment service Maglan City. This data will be preprocessed by filling in plain data because at this data set. Uh, have a blink data and handling odd layer data. After the data is ready and uh, scaling and the scaling process, use a min max scaler. After that, uh, divided the data set uh, into training data and testing data. Bit composition is uh, 80% and 20%. Then determining the parameters of its kernel using the grid search method, which is divided into two states. There is a loose grid and thinner grid. In, in a loose grid is the stage where is the selection of C on values with uh, gamma integer power. Well, the final grid is the next step of the loose grid when the values of C and R are obtained with the lowest error. Then the final grid uses the value of around the C. After getting the best parameter modeling, data training, and testing, and uh, data will be evaluation will use the main absolute percentage error or MAPI. If uh, the mean absolute percentage error MAPI under 10% shown for casting results are accurate. Um, this is a method grid search method that determine determining the parameter in the RPF kernel, that is a parameter C, gamma, and epsilon. Well, the polynomial kernel determine the degree and C parameters. The parameters determined in carry out using the grid search method, wherein the rank value is set with an even value with a difference of two in the loose grid stage. For parameter C with a range minus four until eight, will form the gamma parameter with a range of minus eight to four, and the epsilon parameter is set with a value of 0.01, and the, and the, the, and the degree parameter with a value of one. The best result from the loose grid stage are parameter C with a value minus four and gamma is 
the power of null. So at the final grid state, the number around the number minus four for parameter C will be used between minus 4.75 to minus 3.75 with a difference of 0.25 and around the number O for the gamma parameter of range of o minus 0 0.75 up to 0 0.75. The result of the final grid stage will be in the parameter used in modeling with the base parameter. Let me see with a value of 2 to the power of minus 4.75 and gamma of 2 to the power of 0.5. And the result after getting the base model training is carried out on the training data and evaluation of the testing data is carried out. The result obtained using the RPF kernel and polymal kernel are almost identical to the accurate category. The evaluation value with the MAPI on the RPF kernel is 7.24%. The polynomial kernel is 8.17%. Well, the result for the training data are still in the good category. Uh, the RPF kernel is 11.7%. And the polynomial kernel is 12.43%. Here you can see the prediction result from the RPF kernel at the training data and testing data, whereas uh, the training data is at a good category, but in the testing data is better at a accurate category. And this result for a kernel polynomial at the training data, also at a, a good category and a testing data is also better at a accurate category. When we viewed at a glance, the result of the two kernel have almost the same result. And the conclusion of the result is the SVR method is proven to produce perfect accuracy in the case of regression with uh, nonlinear data type. The grid search method, which is divided into two states, can produce optimal parameter for use in each kernel to maximize the performance of good kernel. The result of this prediction can be used by the government in making decisions and policies, but still considering other factors, such as the current state of the COVID-19 pandemic. Further research, research can use other methods to make prediction and use more significant amount of data to increase accuracy both during training and testing. That is my presentation. Thank you.
I am finished my presentation. I'm sorry, I forgot to unmute myself. Uh, thank you, Ibu Christina, for the presentation. And we invite one question for Ibu Christina, please. No question? Okay, thank you, Ibu Christina. Would you please uh, stop the screen share so I can take a picture of you? Thank you. Okay. Ready, Bu? Ready. Three, two, one, smile. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Christina. You. Yeah, okay. Uh, finally, we've come to the last presentation today will be presented by Bapak Adi Zainal Mustaqim from Amikam University Indonesia. Um, he will deliver a presentation entitled The Effect of Recursive Feature Elimination with Cross-Validation uh, Feature Selection Algorithm Toward Classifier Performance on Credit Card Fraud Detection. Bapak Adi Zainal Mustaqim? Yes, Are miss. Ready? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, wait, I should point you. Where are you? Oh, here you are. Huh? Okay, Pat, please. You may start your presentation. The floor is yours. Oke, okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Miss Yanti, for the chance that given to me. Let me introduce my team. My name is Adi Zonal Mustaqim. The second one is Miss Sumarni Adi. And two other authors, namely Miss Mr. Yuka and Miss Yuli. Now I would like to present about the effect of recursive feature elimination with cross-validation RFECV feature selection algorithm toward classifier performance on credit card fraud detection. In general, uh, firstly, we will discuss about introduction. Secondly, the method we use in our research. Thirdly, about the result we got. And the last is conclusion. Okay, from the first uh, introduction, Credit card as considered as one part of the lifestyle of modern society. However, transaction using credit card are often fraudulent. To overcome this problem, data mining process is used to classify fraudulent transaction on credit card. Using data mining application, usually use data set with large dimension. Uh, The characteristics of data set with high dimension have many attributes or many features, where not all of these attributes are required to the determining process. The data set with high dimension will undoubtedly influence the process of applying data mining techniques, including classification that apply in this study. Some of the problems caused by high dimensional data set are the performance of classification algorithm regarding accuracy and computation time. So to overcome this problem, uh, in data mining process, a feature selection algorithm is used to select attributes that affect the classification result to find out how much influence the feature selection uh, algorithm has on the performance 
of the classification result. Uh, Oke, okay. next literature review. There are three paper and the one uh, from Mr. Wibawa with result PCAA algorithm can increase accuracy value of the KNN algorithm. RFE algorithm does not change the accuracy value. RFECV algorithm reduce the accuracy value. All method can reduce the completion time of classification. For the second paper from Mr. Chang, the result is the RFECV algorithm increase in the accuracy value of the classification algorithm used. The last from Mr. Misra, this, the result is the RFACV algorithm increase in the accuracy value of the classification algorithm used. The research refer to several uh, paper lead, relate to the RFACV algorithm based on the differences in the result of the studies in the Polder statement. We are trying to do research with a data set of credit card for detection. Okay, the step that we do in this research are uh, data collection, after that uh, data cleaning, feature selection, and then classification, and the last is evaluation. For the one, data collection. The data collection in this study was obtained from the transaction data set of one bank in Indonesia at the 2018 FinHack competition. You can find the this data data set on this link. Based on this data, there are 27 future attribute and one class attribute. Data cleaning and at this stage, the data cleaning process is carried out. The cleaning process include missing values handling, and then duplicate data removal, inconsistent data checking. And the last is checking, checking for errors in data. In our research, uh, we handling missing value by uh, filling a uh, fill with median in this attribute. Next step is feature selection. In this research, uh, the algorithm and the algorithm used is recursive feature elimination with course validation. RFECV with three different k values. There are five, ten, and fifteen. The RFECV algorithm will remove redundant and weak attributes that have little impact on the classification result. Attributes automatically selected by RFECV algorithm. And then classification and evaluation. For the first, uh, we uh, prepare uh, data training and data testing by 80% data training and 20% data testing. We use a uh, two classification algorithm. There are decision tree or DT and knife base or NB. We use a convention metric for evaluation of our model with uh, several parameter. There are uh, accuracy, precision, recall, F1 score and computation time. Okay. See the picture on the screen. On the left side, on the left side, with values of K is 5 and K is 10, the selected attribute amount to 30, 13 out of total of 27 attributes. While on the right side, with the value of K is 15, The selected attributes is 10. The larger the value of k tends to reduce the selected attributes. Okay, uh, selection result. The left image is a graph of the effect of the k value on computing time of feature selection, while the right image is a graph of the effect of the K value on the selected attributes. The greater the value of K, the computational time for future selection is higher and the selected attribute tends to be less. 
this is a table for evaluation result in this table uh, there are complete evaluation result on the classification algorithm with and without using the RAVCV future algor selection algorithm for the first row this is a original data set and the second row data set with Algorithm RF, uh, RFACV used with K is 5. Next, uh, row 3 is uh, use K10. And the last, use K value is 15. Evaluation result. This is graph of the evaluation, comparison of evaluation parameter on DT and NP algorithm without the RFECV algorithm. In the screen, both algorithm show almost the same evaluation result from accuracy, recall, precision, and F1 score. Now see uh, implement from RFECV algorithm. This is graph comparison of evaluation parameter on the DT and NP algorithm using the RFECV algorithm with K5 and K is 10. It can be seen that the parameter in the NP algorithm are the same, but have decreased in the DT algorithm. Next, this is script comparison of evaluation parameter on DT and NP algorithm using RFECV algorithm with k value is 15. It also seen that the evaluation result of the NP algorithm are the same, but the data algorithm is decreasing. For conclusion, there are uh, three important points. The first is the feature selection using the RFECP algorithm with three different k values reduce the accuracy values of DT algorithm. And then in the NB algorithm, application of the RFECV algorithm does not affect the evaluation result. And the last is the computation time required for DT and NB algorithm for the classification process is getting smaller with the increasing value of K at the time of feature selection cross validation. For the future uh, research, it is hoped that other uh, feature selection algorithm can be used as comparison to achieve attributes that are truly appropriate for the classification process. There will be question and answer in this presentation. Thank you very much for your great attention. Yeah, um, thank you, Pa Adi Zainal, for the clear presentation. And we invite one or two questions for this uh, presentation, please. Ibu Marni, would you like to ask a question? <laughs> Nothing, ma'am, because this is my research and uh, our uh, my students. So uh, we uh, need uh, some questions to other you know, participants. Yeah, I know. I saw your name there. <laughs> 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 okay, we invite the uh, other participants to post a question. No question? Okay. Uh, would you please stop the screen share for Adi so I can take a picture of you? Okay. Yeah. Let me take a picture of you. This is your student, yeah, Bu Marni, yeah? So we call him Mas Saja, yeah? Mas yes, Adi. Uh, he is my student, uh, my brilliant student in uh, informatics. Okay, good. Uh -uh. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, go. Thank you, Masadi, for the presentation, for uh, the picture as well. You're, you're welcome, Ms. Yanti. Thank you, Bu Sumarni. 
Oke, okay, welcome Mas Adi. Good job. Ya, yeah, that's the end of um, our session, our uh, second session uh, today. We're going back to our uh, main room. In next 15 minutes, uh, we, the, there will be an announcement about uh, the best paper today. So I'll see you again uh, in the main room in next 15 minutes. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Please, please stay. We haven't uh, take a group picture here. Yeah, would you please open the camera? <laughs> okay, Pak Rahmat. Is Pak Marwan here? Mr. Um, Matthias Nickting, can you open the camera so we can take a picture together? Kayaknya ditinggal ya. Pak Muhammad Reza, are you there? Maybe because of the uh, different uh, time matters, time difference matters. Yang sana udah pada tidur kali. I'm still here. Oh, you're still there. <laughs> Pak Marwan, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mr. Matthias Nickting from Germany. Germany. Yeah. Maybe uh, Middle Nike. Yeah, maybe he already take the bedtime. Okay, three, two, one, can we smile together? Three, two, one. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much, everyone. Let's go back to the main room in next 15 minutes. See you. Okay. Alip, Alip, da?